Hey everybody and welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be talking about the number one predictor of diabetes and we're going to be talking about prevention of diabetes because this chronic disease is on the rise in America unfortunately and we see it a lot in our patients who have neuropathy. Now there are many forms of neuropathy that can look like Kent or radiation or chemo induced neuropathy, alcohol induced, and if you're suffering with burning or tingling in the hinge of the feet, go check out my one of my past videos where I dive into all the root causes of neuropathy and how we treat those. But when it comes to diabetics, we see them developing these neuropathy symptoms and it's just greatly impacting their life. And it's my mission to help people prevent the development of neuropathy and also diabetes and any other chronic diseases. And by doing videos like this, I can help educate and empower you about warning signs when you are at risk for diabetes. And that's what we're going to be unveiling today in this video. So now the first predictor or the number one predictor of diabetes is insulin resistance. And this occurs when your body cells don't respond well to insulin. This can lead to higher levels of blood sugar. And so if you notice that maybe you feel really good for a short period of time after you eat and then you crash, you feel lethargic afterwards, feel like you need to take a nap in the mid-afternoon, you could have insulin resistance. And this is one of the biggest signs. Most people, you can use a glucometer in order to check your blood sugars to see if there is any variance and if your blood sugars are staying way too high. But when it comes to preventing diabetes, some of the first signs and symptoms of this are fatigue, which most of our patients that come in have some sort of fatigue, they're completely exhausted, and this can make you feel tired and sluggish, and even in the mornings when you wake up, you may feel sluggish or tired, like you didn't get restful sleep or you need more. And a lot of the times that is correlated to these insulin resistance or blood sugar issues. The next sign is weight gain. Insulin resistance can make it difficult to lose weight. It may lead to weight gain, particularly around the abdomen. So if you have extra weight on the front of the abdomen or the side or the love handle area, those can be signs that your blood sugar levels are being too high and all of that glucose is getting deposited and transformed into fat. And to address this, you really need to be conscious about what you're eating and how much you're eating. But if you had unexpected weight gain, even though you may be eating well or changed your diet, then you definitely want to look and see if you have any type of insulin resistance. Brain fog, this is one uh, symptom that we see in almost all of our patients. Now, if you're having difficulty concentrating or memory problems, then this can be associated with insulin resistance. There's a lot of studies coming out now behind the hippocampus and cortisol rhythms. So the hippocampus is where you store your memories and uh, you have all of your past events, but it also controls your cortisol rhythm, which can affect your blood glucose. And now they're calling Alzheimer's type 3 diabetes, and that just means that the same processes that type 2 diabetes and leading to the neuropathies that we see where it damages the microvasculature in your hands and your feet is also damaging the microvasculature in your brain, leading to these cognitive issues. So not only will this help with any type of systemic pain, but it can also help with cognitive function as well. The next thing is high blood pressure. Insulin resistance can contribute to high blood pressure, which is a risk factor for heart disease. And how it does this is that if you have too much glucose in your blood, then what it will do is it will take water from your cells or your muscle tissue and pull it into that bloodstream. And as you increase the volume of water in those blood vessels, it's going to increase the pressure. So not, not many people understand that, but if you're having to get on a blood pressure medication due to it being so high, obviously there are stress and those type of lifestyle uh, things that can occur and cause that issue, but also it can be from a nutritional and metabolic standpoint that it will increase the blood pressure as well. And that can be one of the very first signs that maybe you're having insulin resistance. The 
next thing is skin changes. So dark velvety patches of skin called encanthosis nigrans can appear in areas like the neck, the armpits, and the groin. So if you notice that you have some dark pigmentation, or especially around the back of the neck or under the arms or around the, the abdomen or groin, then you definitely want to make sure that you're regulating your blood sugars, talking to your doctor, getting your A1C check, getting your blood glucose check, because that is a very high indication that we have insulin resistance or we may be pre-diabetic. Pre also, another warning sign is skin tags or skin warts. A lot of the times these develop because they are little benign growths that happen because those cells are fed too much sugar. And if you know anything about cancer, you know that it loves sugar and it will continually feed off of the sugar and grow and grow. And one of the best ways that you can address that is by cutting out the sugar and cutting off the supply chain to any type of benign growth or even more um, like ha more um, like severe types of growths and you can cancel that out and inhibit their growth. So those are just a few signs and symptoms that you need to be aware of that may indicate that you have insulin resistance and you definitely want to get checked uh, your blood glucose and your A1Cs to make sure if you're on that verge and if you're heading in that direction towards diabetes. So some factors that contribute to insulin resistance, there are three, and we talk about these a lot, but poor diet, which looks like eating high amounts of processed foods, sugars, and unhealthy fats can lead to insulin resistance. Lack of exercise, physical activity helps the body regulate blood glucose. So what it does, if you're being physically active and you don't have to do anything intense that can look like light walking, you know, 15 to 30 minutes every day or every other day, that can help take the sugar in the blood and pull it into that muscle tissue so that it will get readily burned. And that decreases the chance of it getting stored as fat later, especially around the abdomen or the love handle area. So making sure that you're doing that, I'm a big fan of HIIT training. If you really want to burn fat and increase your metabolic capacity, that's a great way to do it. The last one is obesity. So the more fat tissue that you put on, it increases your risk for developing insulin resistance or prediabetes. It also increases the amount of estrogen that you produce, which can be counterproductive, especially for men, if you're trying to put on muscle mass or if you're you know, wanting to stay nice and healthy. That fat tissue can be one harder on your joints if you're having to move it around all the time. So there are multiple things that obesity affects, not only is it the insulin resistance. So just some different ways that you can protect yourself from insulin resistance are do the opposite of those last three things I've talked about. So eat a balanced diet. You want to make sure that you're focusing on more whole foods. You want to be careful about eating gluten, dairy, soy, corn, processed sugars, all of those, and sometimes nightshades can cause inflammation issues. So be very careful and try to really regulate your diet, making sure you're eating lean meats, uh, fatty fish are great, eating enough protein, you know, good amount of vegetables, and some fruit. Some fruits are too high glycemic, especially if you're not getting the fiber component with it. So you want to be careful about your fruits. And then the next thing is the exercise we talked about. Try to get you know anywhere between 15 and 30 minutes a day or every other day can really you know impact over a year or two. It can really change your physical appearance and how you feel and your metabolic capacity. Then also maintaining that healthy weight, which the two aforementioned uh, ways will help manage the weight and help manage your blood sugars as you continue to age and get older. But metabolic health is is everything. So. Now, there are certain things that you can do to check and see if you are at risk for these, but uh, a fasting blood sugar is one of the best tests, so if, you, if your blood sugar is really high, typically I don't like to see fasting blood glucoses above 95 because that can indicate that we're starting to get into that insulin resistance uh, piece and that you're not pushing that glucose into your muscle tissue. And then another test that you can do is um, an oral glucose tolerance test. And most of your practitioners, like in primary care, can help manage.
manage that and guide you through how to do that test. But you can just see what your glucose response is if it's if too much of it is staying in your bloodstream and not uh, if you're not secreting enough insulin or if the insulin sensitivity is downregulated, you'll see that your blood glucose stays maintained over a long period of time. So I hope you found this uh, video helpful. Make sure that you're being proactive towards your health and not reactive. And let me know what you thought in the comments below. Please like and share this with your family and friends. And I will see you all next time. Bye.